Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. I'm just hanging out with my girl Ivy here, the anaconda, and really, I'll tell you what, these guys are definitely the king of amphibious snakes, or in this case, uh, uh, the queen of amphibious snakes. I just find it really interesting how these guys are actually made for the water, right? You can see the bubbles on her back that just are there. I'm not sure exactly what that's for, but of course their eyes are more to the top of their head so that she can, just like she's doing now, she can have just the tip of her nose and her eyes actually can be out of the water, but the majority of her head can be underwater. Of course, it's weird when she actually goes in the water, how she breathes and the bubbles kind of come out. Uh, and every now and then you'll see like extra bubbles on her nose. Not sure if that's something that they use for like uh, extra oxygen if they need to, or how long they can actually stay underwater. I'm not a 100% sure, but it's just fascinating to me that a giant constrictor could spend the majority of their life in the water. When you think of reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, rock pythons, these are really ground dwelling animals. You know, they might climb a little bit, but to have a giant snake that is literally like an amphibious animal is crazy to me. Again, we've seen footage of like anaconda swimming in the Amazon, huge monster, almost looks like giant eels. So it's really just an amazing thing. And just look at how crazy it is. Again, totally underwater. She can see me right now. She's looking at me. You can see the little bubbles on her face right there. See the bubbles on her nose right there? And then she just pops barely up out of the water. I mean, I tell you what, anacondas are fascinating and I've always thought they were incredible. But for whatever reason, I think now that we have this big enclosure, it's just a different level, right? We're able to observe her doing her natural things so much more than we ever had before. And holy cow, it's crazy. Even the fact that they'll stick their tongue out where they're actually smelling underwater, it's bizarre. So uh, I don't know, I just wanted to take this first few minutes of the morning and just spend time with my girl Ivy. We have a lot of other things to do today, but uh, I tell you what, that animal is ridiculous. Yep, still snowing. I'm so happy about this. Of course, this is my Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Ball. And of course, this is her habitat. We've had her for a little over a month now, and honestly, she loves this habitat, or appears to, because she is crawling all over the place, but I have not gotten her to eat yet. So this kind of is an example of how uh, sometimes you have to pivot a little bit. And what I mean by that is that we've tried all kinds of different ways of feeding her in there, no response whatsoever. So we decided to put her in this enclosure overnight. You know, so we basically just have, again, a branch for her to be in a little water dish. We sprayed her down and stuff like that. And we actually did put a live fuzzy rat in there uh, because we just wanted her to eat. Again, a month long. This is a very rare and not easy to get snake. I didn't want anything to happen to her. So I finally said, let's just go ahead, try something different, put her in here. And I'm so excited to tell you guys that she ate for the first time last night. She did, that's amazing. Now she She's a captive bred animal, came from my buddy Kevin over at Nerd, uh, and he raised her up. So I know she was eating, it's not a wild animal or anything like that, but for whatever reason, she just didn't feel comfortable enough in the cage to eat. Or maybe we couldn't offer her into a position where obviously we couldn't throw live because the live would be down here, she's way up there, it's never gonna work, right? So we kept offering her frozen with like heating them up, doing all the things, talk to Kevin how he was feeding it, and uh, he had a similar setup to this, a little bit different, but similar, and it was crushing food. So now that she's eaten her first rodent, there's a good chance that she may actually start eating in here. Regardless, now I know the worst case scenario is once a week I've got to take her off her branch, put her in this enclosure, and give her food until she starts to really establish. So uh, again, just a little lesson for you guys. Try different things if your snake isn't eating because eventually you find the thing that actually works. But I am so excited that she's finally eating. I've been pretty excited about this. My friend MJ actually sent me this, and uh, you guys know uh, all about my my good friend Forrest. Well, these are actually shirts that are memorials to him. So all the proceeds actually go to Zoo Dreams. So follow your Zoo Dreams cold-blooded cafe, of course, where we get all our rodents. That is awesome. And for those of uh, you Supreme fans out there, uh, this is pretty dope here. Check that out, Zoo Dreams. I tell you what, I absolutely love this. And there it is, fits amazing, absolutely incredible. I'll put a link in the description to these guys. All of the proceeds go to Forrest family uh, to help them out. I love this, I love the other one as well. So uh, thank you MJ for sending us and making these absolutely amazing. I 
got my boy Argamas here. So um, we, I, I'm actually bringing him out because I need to get him get him in some water, get him soaking a little bit. So some sheds I want to make sure he gets off on his own. But I figured this would be a good moment to actually talk to you guys. Why, why we have Argamas the way we do and why we do like basically everything sort of different with him than, than other animals. He is one of our smaller monitors here. As far as like viciousness go, I'll take a smaller guy over a bigger guy for sure. Overall, Argamas here is more bark than bite. As you can see, he really just wants to get away. He's not really interested in being part of this right now. He just wants to be somewhere away from us. He's not one that we want to hold. He's one that we want to kind of like almost like a dolphin show. You want him coming out, busting out the gate like a like a raptor almost. And so he's he's basically like our version of Blue from Jurassic Park. So even though we don't work on behavior necessarily, we do like to work on a stimuli. And the stimuli here is definitely like throwing like a, it could be anything like throwing a snake shed just on the floor and having him walk around and taking a look at it. You know those little things and, and including actually soaking him. That's another reason why I soak him is like you know you put him in a new environment and it, it he asks a lot of questions and that's what you want them to do. You don't want them to be like constantly like no 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 you want them to actually be like what's going on why am i here what what is this place you know you want the questions to really be asked and like have him try to figure out on his own that's how you get his brain working that's how you get that stimulus really really charging it so just giving you guys a little update on the new tricolor hog nose that we got i went ahead this week and fed them all and i was very pleasantly surprised that they all ate frozen thawed pinkies i love that it makes my life a lot easier so they are loving their new homes settling in good so i'm excited to raise these guys up and hopefully get some babies in a couple years back in the day we just had your regular tri-colored hog nose which look more like this girl right here so we have some of those but then we also got a few that i guess they're calling jag so they have a really cool different patterning to them as you can see i think that it's a line bread trait so we've got a couple of this jag phase and then a couple normals so it'll be interesting to see what we get out from the babies still snowing. I want to actually weigh salt and pepper here just to see how they are. Pepper is looking huge by the way. Salt looks big too though, uh, but it's a little bit more challenging now because of course we've got our scale here. Uh, they're a little bit too big to put on the scale and uh, of course they're too big to put in a small container on the scale. So I have to come up with a little MacGyvering here to figure out how I can actually weigh these guys, find out what kind of growth they are. Uh, I'm sure they have grown a ton. I think salt and pepper were about 5,000 grams the last time, right in that range. So uh, I cannot imagine how big they've gotten now so let's go ahead and just figure something out and uh, get these guys out and see how much they weigh not sure if this is gonna work here but I figure if I put a bucket there this on top of there then we can actually uh, go ahead zero this out right now we can put these in here and theoretically it should work but uh you know I don't know if it's gonna work or not so I'm gonna get pepper first because uh, it's sitting there waiting for me oh boy there we go pepper well, that didn't work out so well. Okay, so let's see what we got. Come on, Pepper. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pepper, it's okay, it's okay. Calm down, calm down, calm down. This is gonna be the hard part. Oh, it wants to bite me so bad. This is gonna be the hard part. All right, so I have to actually go in reverse here with Pepper because it, this is the last time I'll ever try to weigh her like this because she's so crazy. So what I did was I put her on here. I actually uh, zeroed it out here. Now I'll take her off and we'll see how negative it goes and hopefully we'll get an accurate reading. If not, this whole thing just doesn't work. Okay. I mean, that might be accurate, about 4,300, you know, almost 4,400, 4,386. So about 4,400, I can actually live with that. I think that that's a pretty accurate, because again, I think that, uh, I can't remember the last time when we did this, I thought they were more like 5,000, but maybe they were like 3,000, I'm not sure. So regardless, pepper is definitely a pain in the butt, but salty is much better. So uh, she should behave for us a lot better. Of course, Salty is uh, a much different animal. She's really good. Hey, calm down. And you can see she'll just stay calm for me. Calm, Salt, calm. And she won't fight me like Pepper, you know? She still wound up a little bit, so we'll just hold her for a few more minutes. Hey, calm down, girl. That's a good girl. Um, I tell you what, what a difference with an animal, right? I mean, she is just such a sweetheart compared to Pepper. You stay calm. Stay, stay calm. There we go, girl. And she's actually 2,950 grams. 
So pretty interesting. I'm gonna do the exact same thing just to see. It says 29.50, I'm gonna zero it out. I'll put her back and then I'll take that off and see if it's the same weight. She is such a sweetheart, I tell you what. Uh, I love Pepper, but oh my God, that animal is insane. So we had, let's see. Oh, see, interestingly enough, when we teared this out, it was 4,000 grams. So I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. I don't know that this is a real accurate way of measuring. We're gonna have to come up with a new scale. I think I'll have to use the bigger scale from now on, but apparently they're both about 4,000 grams. Who knows which one's which? So this was, uh, I'm not gonna lie, this was a complete fail. So don't even, don't even pay attention to anything you saw right now. It was uh, a waste of our time. I know a ton of people have been asking about the fish in Bowser's and you can see there's a ton of fish still in there. We put 50 small ones in, about a dozen bigger ones. I can't tell for sure how many are there, but there's certainly, I think the majority, if not all of them are still there, going around, of course, African cichlids, doing really well. And we have thought about putting some fish in with ivy. Still not sure how I feel about it, but uh, there's a chance I, I might do that. I'm not 100% sure. Will it ever stop snowing? It is the middle of April, isn't it? Did I? What month is it again? As you can see, there's a lot more sheds. What happens is Lori actually will just put the sheds over so we can see them just like this, this, as far as uh, kind of identify. That way we go back and actually put, and gosh, this is an Andre Brooks string that is loaded up with eggs. That way we'll actually put lay tags on them. We have red tags that go on here that say the date that they shed and the fact that they're seven to 10 days before. So you can see shed, 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 sheds over here. So a lot of pre-lay sheds, uh, meaning there's gonna be a lot of clubbered eggs in about seven to 10 days. Quick update here on the caiman lizard that lost its tail, still doing completely fine, eating and stuff like that, which is the important thing, because oftentimes when a lizard loses its tail, you know, it can go into kind of a stress situation where it won't eat. This guy's jamming on food. Still not sure if they grow back. I mean, I don't see anything that tells me it will, but uh, in the next week or so, if we start to see a little sprouting, that would be a great sign. I sure hope that they will grow back, but regardless, I just wanted to let you know, we're gonna get that enclosure back sealed up and working well and get these guys back in there pretty soon. But for now, uh, at least it's doing well it seems to be rebounding still really bummed about it but uh but at the same time at least it's doing well i've mentioned before about using this time to kind of you know, do things that you wanted to do. We're actually uh, about to launch a new business that I've been working on for a little bit while, and then I came up with a new idea that I'll tell you guys pretty soon that I'm excited about. Hopefully in the next week or so, I'll be able to launch something else that I think will be really cool in these times. So uh, just continue to use this time to, to use your imagination. Uh, don't just sit around watching TV all day or something like that, use it, you know? You might be able to do something really cool or something that you've been thinking about doing for a long time. This may be the exact time you wanna get started in it. Look what we have here, a couple little crusty Yay, geckos. Oh my gosh, they are so adorable. Which ones are these? Columbia and riffraff. Columbia and riffraff. So you just set them up in here? Yep. That's so a nice little one in here. There's your little monkey. Some people set the little baby uh, crusties up together. Okay. Not a big person. I, see I just that, yeah. do them separately though, because yeah. I'm going to separate them any, anyway eventually. Yeah, that's good. Well, they look really cool, I tell you what. One it's of so them nice. already has like a lot of spots on it, so it's going to be probably a nice little donation. Absolutely, it's awesome. Yeah, and it's pretty cool just to see uh, the cresties are always a good starter lizard. You know, always say like leopard geckos, crested geckos, bearded dragons, kind of the big three for sure. These guys are super cool. They're even a little bit better than the gargoyles. Even yep. the gar gargoyles are just like one step up though. Exactly. These are a little nicer though. Look how cute he's looking his mouth right now. That's awesome. If you guys haven't been sick of me at this point, do you want to go ahead and hit this playlist right over here? It's a bunch of baby snakes. I know you guys love baby snakes. You can also, if you want even more of me, you can check out my podcast, Checking In, right up over here. Go ahead, subscribe to that. We do a couple a week. It's always a lot of fun. You can also subscribe to the Clips channel if you don't mind. Over here, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. I just gave you guys way too much to do, but I appreciate all your support, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Remember, be kind to someone today, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.